Hey, wrestling enthusiasts, get ready for another thrilling episode of Forgotten Finishers. If you're passionate about the rich history of professional wrestling, you're in the right place. Today, we're uncovering the hidden gems from the early careers of legends like John Cena, The Rock, and Stone Cold Steve Austin. Before we jump into the nostalgia, make sure to hit that like button if you're excited to explore the Forgotten Finishers. And hey, if you're new here, don't forget to subscribe and ring the notification bell. We've got a ton of wrestling content coming your way, and you won't want to miss a single moment. Number 10. John Cena The protobomb was one of John Cena's early finishing moves in his wrestling career. But he missed that crossbody, and now there it is! The protoplex! The protoplex of the prototype! It was a power move that showcased Cena's strength and raw athleticism. The execution of the protobomb involved Cena lifting his opponent onto his shoulders in a fireman's carry position. From there, he would transition smoothly into a seated position, driving his opponent's back and shoulders into the mat with force. While the protobomb may not be as widely remembered as his later finisher, the attitude adjustment, it played a significant role in establishing Cena's in-ring style during the early 2000s. Number 9. The Rock In the initial chapters of The Rock's wrestling journey, he emerged onto the scene as a hopeful and smiling babyface. In those early days, The Rock's finishing move was the running shoulder breaker, a physically formidable maneuver that showcased his strength but lacked the distinctive personality that would later define his in-ring style. The end is near. Rocky with the shoulder breaker. The Rock holds the opponent over his shoulder where he runs a short distance and slams the opponent's free shoulder onto his knee. Despite the impressive athleticism displayed in the running shoulder breaker, the fans, known for their affinity towards anti-heroes, didn't quite resonate with the optimistic persona of Rocky Maivia. Recognizing the need for a character evolution, WWE made a strategic decision to turn the Rock heel, transforming him into a preening, theatrical braggart. The running shoulder breaker was replaced with two of the most iconic finishers in wrestling history, the Rock Bottom and the People's Elbow. Number 8. Stone Cold Steve Austin Stunning Steve Austin, before adopting the iconic Stone Cold persona, had a distinctive finishing move known as the Stun Gun. Who's here at ringside? He's got him up, and there's a Stun Gun! The Stun Gun was a maneuver where Austin would lift his opponent and drop them throat first across the top rope. This move showcased Austin's early wrestling style and contributed to establishing his reputation as a calculated and ruthless competitor in the ring. The stun gun played a role in defining Austin's approach to his opponents during his early career, exhibiting both aggression and a strategic mindset. It was a precursor to the Stone Cold Stunner, the legendary finishing move that would later become synonymous with Austin's rebellious and anti-authoritarian character. Number 7. Shawn Michael During Shawn Michaels' early years, specifically during his time as one half of the dynamic tag team The Rockers in the late 1980s and early 1990s, he showcased a finishing move known as the Teardrop Suplex. Michael certainly didn't give me that impressive impression. I got I can read between the lines. Oh, oh. Journalist. This move was a belly-to-belly -belly suplex variation where Michaels would lift his opponent off the mat and execute a graceful fall backward, bridging his body to enhance the impact of the suplex. While the teardrop suplex was an integral part of Michaels' arsenal during the Rockers' tag team era, it's important to highlight that as his career evolved, Michaels transitioned into a remarkable singles competitor. The shift occurred around the early 1990s. During this period, he would go on to adopt the legendary Sweet Chin music as his primary and iconic finishing maneuver. Number 6. Triple H You probably heard about the Pedigree Pandemonium, a move inspired by DDP Diamond Cutter, but it wasn't Triple H's first finishing move. Terror Rising is a persona that Triple H used earlier in his career before adopting the name Triple H in WWE. During the Terror Rising era in World Championship Wrestling, Triple H had a finishing move known as the Inverted Indian Deathlock. You mean Mr. Turner? The Inverted? The an ankle for a submission effect, Triple H didn't achieve the same level of prominence he would later attain in WWE, and his move set and character underwent significant changes when he joined WWE and adopted his famous double underhook facebuster, the Pedigree. Number 5. Randy Orton Randy Orton began his professional wrestling career in Ohio Valley Wrestling, a developmental territory associated with WWE. Orton joined OVW in the early 2000s to refine his skills and gain experience before making his main roster debut. His initial finishing move was the full Nelson Slam, a technique he employed until 2002. Orton falls, look at this! Oh, look at this! Oh, Nelson! This move, while effective, was somewhat commonplace in its use and had been utilized by several wrestlers like Jinder Mahal, Mojo Rawley, and Chris Masters. 
The full Nelson slam is a derivative of the full Nelson, executed by grabbing the opponent's arms from behind, locking them above their back, and slamming them onto the mat. Randy Orton subsequently transitioned away from the full Nelson slam, opting for the diving crossbody and later incorporating the overdrive into his repertoire. However, it wasn't until 2003 that Orton introduced the RKO, a move that would become synonymous with his name, propelling him to major stardom in the wrestling world. Number 4. Jeff Hardy Long before he became the charismatic enigma, Jeff Hardy stunned audiences with death-defying maneuvers. His initial finisher was the 450 splash. There's Jeff! The 450 splash by Jeff Hardy and his own brother! This high-flying move showcased Hardy's daredevil nature and set the stage for the breathtaking maneuvers that would define his career. In a conversation with Colt Cabana on his The Art of Wrestling podcast in 2017, Jeff discussed the decision to retire the 450 splash. I stopped doing the 450 because I over-rotated and jacked my shoulder up. I thought I broke my collarbone or something, but those days are over, so I'll stick with the Swanton. Number 3. The Undertaker if you're a nearly 7-foot-tall undead monster, you need a finishing move that suits your frightful persona. The Tombstone Pile Driver, which became iconic for The Undertaker, perfectly complemented his eerie image. However, it wasn't always his chosen finisher. Before his WWE days, The Undertaker competed in promotions like World Class Championship Wrestling and the Continental Wrestling Association. Additionally, he briefly appeared in World Championship Wrestling in 1989 under the ring name Mean Mark Callis. As Mean Mark Callis in 1989, he employed various finishing moves, including the heart punch, the heat-seeking missile, and the flying clothesline. It's uncertain which was his first, but the heat-seeking missile involved the Undertaker walking the top rope, similar to old school, and then, instead of leaping off for a swift blow to his opponent's limbs, he executed an elbow drop the opponent ribs. And Alan Reynolds lying there three quarters of the way across the ring. Master of Pain walks the rope and springs across. Number 2. Hulk Hogan. Hulk Hogan's first widely recognized finishing move in his early wrestling career was the Axe Bomber, also known as the Axe Clothesline. The Axe Bomber was a powerful clothesline attack where Hogan would swing his arm in a lariat motion, aiming to knock down his opponent with sheer force. <laughs> He also used submission moves quite something in his early days like the torture rack, for example in his WWE debut or the bear hug before the 80s. This move became associated with Hogan during his time in the American Wrestling Association and other promotions before he rose to mainstream prominence with the World Wrestling Federation. It was a precursor to his more famous finishing moves like the atomic leg drop and the big boot, which became synonymous with Hulk Hogan's persona during his peak years in the 1980s and 1990s. Number 1. Roman Reigns when you think about Roman Reigns, the image of his destructive finishing move, the spear, likely comes to mind. However, in his initial foray into NXT in 2012, Reigns secured victory with a back suplex side slam named Moment of Silence. It's noteworthy that Reigns' wrestling career traces back to late 2010 in Florida Championship Wrestling, where he adopted the ring name Roman Leakey. During the earlier phases of his career, the Samoan drop stood as Reigns' inaugural finishing maneuver. That's maybe an experience showing he's got to capitalize. Leaki Picks him up. Out the Samoan drop. That is Leon. This powerful technique involved Reigns, of Samoan descent, hoisting his opponent onto his shoulders in a fireman's carry position before forcefully dropping them to the mat, executing the move with a fluid and impactful motion. The Samoan drop remained a staple in Reigns' repertoire, marking his beginnings in the wrestling world. As we wrap up this journey into the forgotten finishers of wrestling legends, it's fascinating to witness the evolution of these iconic moves. From the proto-bomb to the 450 splash, these early finishers laid the groundwork for the legendary careers we celebrate today. What's your favorite forgotten finisher? Let us know in the comments.